In this video, we will be going over double line and multi line tools. Start by right clicking a blank spot in the workspace. This will bring up the customize dialog. Check double line, double line modify, and multi line, then click close. Depending on where these toolbars appear, you may need to move them out of the way so we can see the drawing area. There we go. Both the double line and multi line tools are very similar to the tools in the line toolbar that we went over in a previous video. The big difference is in their properties. So let's start by right clicking the double line tool to bring up properties. Now click on double line. Notice the different properties to the right side of the dialog. The value for separation defines the distance between the two lines. Let's change it to two. Reference refers to how geometry is placed relative to your mouse clicks. For example, if you choose center, the double line would be constructed to either side of the data you enter. For now, let's leave it at center. End caps place line segments on either end of the double line to give it the appearance of a closed entity. Let's check both start and end. Before we hit OK, let's change pen and brush properties. Under pen, select 0.05 for the line weight. Then under brush, select solid as the pattern, red as the pattern color, then hit OK. Now back to the drawing area. Choose the double line tool and draw two lines of about 40 inches in length. Then draw a third line that intersects them both. Notice how the order in which the lines are drawn affect how they lay on top of each other. This is because of the draw order. You can change the draw order by selecting an entity, then choosing a command from the draw order submenu of the tools menu. In this case, I want to place the selected entity behind the other two, so I will choose send to back. The double line polyline tool draws a double line by sequential mouse clicks or data entry. Go ahead and draw a double line polyline near the three lines we have already drawn. Remember, if you want to draw a straight line, hold down the shift key to force orthogonal. And if you make a mistake, you can use the one step back option. Just like the regular polygon tool, the double line polygon is drawn by defining the radius of an invisible circle. Let's draw one near our other double lines. With the double polygon selected, click once to define the center, then tab into the inspector bar. Enter 8 for sides, an angle of 0, and a radius of 7. Then hit enter to complete the operation. We now have a double line octagon. Let's take a closer look at this octagon by selecting it, then hitting Alt Backspace on your keyboard. This will zoom to the extents of the selected entity. Now grab the bounding box on the right side and bring it towards the center of the entity. Notice how it appears we are squishing the entity. But when we click to finalize the resize operation, the distance between the two lines will return to 2 inches. Similar to the double line polyline, the irregular double line polygon constructs a closed double line entity with a series of mouse clicks. After zooming out a bit, try drawing a polygon that encloses the rest of our drawing. Try both using mouse clicks and entering values for length and angle in the inspector bar. Just like the polyline, you can choose the one step back option if you make a mistake. The double rectangle and double rotated rectangle behave the same as their single line counterparts. Before trying them out, let's open up properties and change the reference to left. Now go ahead and draw a rectangle. Notice how the mouse clicks now define the inner dimensions of the double line? Let's change the reference to right to see how that works. Now try using the double line rotated rectangle. As expected, the mouse clicks now define the outer dimensions of the double line. The next two tools use existing geometry to create the double lines. Let's try both of them out. For perpendicular double line, first select the line you would like the double line to be drawn perpendicular to. Then click to define the position of the line. Now tab into the inspector bar and enter a length of, let's say, 14. For the parallel double line, you first select the entity you would like the new double line to be parallel to. And if you would like the parallel line to be a different length, you can turn off Keep Length. One advantage of using the double lines is how we are able to modify them. All of the standard modify tools work on double lines. 
While I will go over them in detail in another video, let's take a quick look at two of my favorites now. I can round the corners of the surrounding irregular polygon with the fillet tool, or do a corner trim with the meet two lines tool. Notice how both the lines are trimmed and extended correctly to create an L intersection. For X and T intersections, there are special tools. Let's go over the X intersection first. Remember those first three lines we drew? Let's select them all by dragging a green fence from right to left, making sure the fence touches each double line. Now hit Alt Backspace on your keyboard to zoom to the extents of your selection, then hit Escape to deselect. Now choose the X Meet tool and select one of the intersecting double lines. After selecting both lines, you'll notice that the intersection is now cleaned up, with the lines continuous around the fill. To create a T intersection, you will first want to select the line segment opposite the segment that you would like to be removed, then selecting the double line you would like to trim to. Notice that the intersection is not clean. This is because of the end cap. We can remove this by selecting the recently trimmed double line and turning off either start or end cap. Now it's time to take a look at the multi lines. So let's select everything on screen and delete it. Now choose the multi line rectangle and draw a 10 by 10 rectangle. Let's zoom to extents and then back up one or two zoom levels. Okay, now let's take a look at this rectangle's properties. A quick way to an entity's properties is to double click it. Let's take a look at line elements. Notice that the multi line is currently made up of three line elements one down the center, and an additional line offset a quarter inch from each side. Each of these line elements can be changed individually. Let's change the color of each. You do so by selecting the line element's offset value, then choosing a different color from the drop down above. I will choose blue, red, and green, then hit OK. Looks like the line color of each element has changed. Let's go back into properties. We can add a new line element by clicking add. Notice the new line element will have an offset of zero. Let's change it to 0.5 and give it a dashed line pattern. Now let's add another line element. Give it an offset of negative 0.5, change the pattern to border and the color to coral and click OK. There we go, our multi-line now has five elements. What would happen if this rectangle was a drastically larger size? Well, let's find out. Select the rectangle, then tab into the inspector bar, and put 10 for scale X and 10 for scale Y, then hit enter. Now zoom to extents to fit the rectangle back on screen. The multi-line now appears to be a confusing mess. We can fix this by going into multi-line properties and changing the offset scale to 10. There we go, that looks much better. Let's go ahead and delete the rectangle, then hit the zoom to extents button to return the camera to the default zoom level. Now choose the multi-line polygon and draw a couple line segments. Notice that all the line segments are black and solid. This is because the changes we made previously were to an entity's properties and not the tool properties. Let's take a closer look at tool properties while we examine the end cap and joint properties of the multi-line. Go ahead and select anything you now have on screen and delete it. Now right click the multi-line polyline tool and go to general properties. Here we are going to create a property value preset. Property value presets are especially useful when dealing with entities with many properties such as multi-lines. Click your mouse near normal multi-lines and replace normal multi-lines with the text blue round cap, then click new. Now go to brush properties and give the multi-line a solid pattern and a pattern color of blue. Now go to start cap properties. For multi-line caps, there are several options. Let's choose outer arc for both start and end caps. Now go to joint properties and click show. This will place a line segment between the multi-line elements at each corner. Now click OK and start drawing away. You can switch between blue round cap and normal multi-lines in the dropdown found in the standard toolbar. Go ahead and select the single multi-line tool and choose normal multi-lines from the standard toolbar. Now draw two lines that intersect each other. Now how do we go about creating a T intersection? Notice that both the T and X meet tools are grayed out. That is because they only work on double lines and there are no double lines present in the drawing. 
Well, we can use the Trim tool to get partway there. Go ahead and choose Object Trim from the right side toolbar. Now select the line you would like to use as the cutting edge, then the segment you would like to be removed. To finish cleaning up the intersection, we will need to select both lines and explode them. Let's start by cleaning up the center line with the Trim tool. Now we can clean up the outer lines with the Trim and Meet Two Lines tools. And that's about it for this video. We went over the double and multi-line tools and even dabbled a bit in modify tools and property presets. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel to receive notifications on when the next video will be out and be sure to download the latest version of TurboCAD from TurboCAD.com today.